Hey guys, what's up? My name is Leanne and I'm in the garden again. I have a bug problem. It's that time of year, not a big deal. Maybe a big deal. I'm gonna show you guys the kinds of bugs that I have in my garden. And I did a little bit of research to find out which ones are good and bad. And I'm gonna share what I found with you guys. But first, I need to get some diatomaceous earth out of my shed and basically put it all over everything. So these are all my fall garden starts. I showed this before, but I gotta move this out of the way. So diatomaceous earth could be used to deworm some livestock also, and like your dogs too. I've never used it for that, though I've heard you can use it for that. This is a big bag of diatomaceous earth that I got from Tractor Supply. I just filled the milk jug up. Sorry, it's hard to do with one hand. I sprinkled that diatomaceous earth on a few things and then I found a good shady spot to take this video. It's in the middle of the day and the baby's napping, so this is not the prime time to record content because of the shadows are harsh and stuff, but we'll make it work in the shade. So I found a bunch of different types of insects and I tried to get a couple of clips of what I could find and I researched what they were and if they were good or bad for the garden. So the first one, probably the most irritating for me, well, not. it goes hand in hand in this, with spiders. It's the red fire ants. So I've been seeing larger red ants. I was thinking that was a different type of fire ant, like a different species, but really it's just a major worker ant. So you could have regular worker ants and major worker ants, and then the queen ants are larger. They're pretty aggressive. As far as eating your plants, I don't think they really do that. But what they do is they find aphids and place them on your plants because the aphids can't get there themselves. They, they find the aphids, they put them on the plants, and the aphids eat the plants and produce like a milk-like substance and the ants come in and milk the aphids. Super gross. Another bug I found in my garden is called an assassin's bug. I found quite a few of these and what's tricky about these is that their babies and stink bug babies look very similar. So assassin's bugs are really aggressive. They're predators. So they're really aggressive but they're predators. So they are good for the garden because they'll eat other flying insects that you don't want in the garden. Sometimes they'll even eat each other. Hi kitty, I hear you. Yes, I do. The assassin's bugs, they, this is just one that I found. This is the most typical looking one that I found, but they come in a bunch of different shapes. They're actually cousins to stink bugs. Uh, I have this type of stink bug called a leaf footed stink bug in my garden. Those are horrible. Those are related to the assassin's bugs but their babies look really, really similar. So when you see them all clumped together, it's hard to tell if they're gonna be good predators that'll eat your bad bugs or if they'll be the stinking leaf of the stink bugs. Caterpillars. Caterpillars are all bad for the garden, as far as I'm aware. I found cabbage worms, which is called a cabbage worm or a cabbage looper, and tomato hornworms and cucumber worms. Now, cucumber worms and cabbage loopers look really similar to me. A cucumber worm can be a couple of different colors. So it could be either all green, green with a white stripe, all green with black stripes, or like black with a lighter color. I found a bunch of variations of what the cucumber worms look like. They look bigger to me in general than the cabbage loopers do, but the green ones are very similar color green, so they can get kind of mixed up, but a good way to tell is what plant is it on. Okay, aphids, already talked about those. Those are bad. Flea beetles, those are also bad. Those are super tiny beetles small like fleas that will eat the leaves of your plants and the fruit of your plants. Oh my, look at this. I'm gonna climb on my notebook. <laughs> my worst enemy in the garden, squash vine borers. Squash vine borers are the worst. So each of those have a moth that they grow up to be. And I will, I did not get pictures of all of them. Okay, and then I found a few different kinds of bees in the garden too. Here and there I found wasps, but I haven't found, or haven't gotten any video of the wasps. So I don't, I'm not gonna share much about that. But what I did get some video of is carpenter bees and bumblebees. So I, I learned this little rhyme from a YouTube video that I watched. I'll try to link that in the description below. 
but it says, if it has hair, beware. It's a bumblebee. If it has a shine, all is fine. It's a carpenter bee. And the reason for that saying is that bumblebees are typically aggressive, which one of my very first memories as a child is being chased by a bumblebee. So I can attest to that it is truth. And then carpenter bees, they do have some hair on them, but they are shining also. So that's how you tell the difference. And typically carpenter bees fly solo and bumblebees live in colonies. I've only found a few different types of butterflies in my garden. There is a yellow one, which I will add the name in here because I just found it out this morning. I took a video of it this morning and I don't know what it's called, but I found two others that I got videos of earlier in the week. And the one is a swallowtail. I actually had this clip in another video, but I'm going to add it here just because that's what we're talking about today. It's a swallowtail butterfly and then a fiery skipper butterfly. Now, butterflies are great pollinators, so on one hand, they're good for the garden. They have eggs that they're going to lay, which will hatch into caterpillars. The caterpillars will eat your, your vegetation. And lastly, spiders. So, I've had a variety of different kinds of spiders in here. Before I did all this research, I thought that they were the same. Or, before I did all this research, I thought that they were all very, like, different species of spiders. But they're all orb weavers. They're all different types of orb weavers with the exception that I found a black widow in the garden earlier this year but that was like in a brick. It wasn't really like in the garden or in the plants anyway. They're all orb weavers so even a banana spider is a type of an orb weaver. It's like a yellow or a golden orb weaver but um, this huge spider that I'm going to show you guys. People mistake this for a banana spider a lot and it's not really Banana spider is not really a proper name for a spider. I learned when I was doing this research, it's um, just an orb weaver spider. So I guess with that description, all of these could be banana spiders. But these little green ones with the red orangish spots on them that are, I don't think I was able to get a clear shot of them because they moved so much I couldn't focus the camera and I'm working with my cell phone here. So I don't have like the best photography equipment here, um, but yeah, they're all orb weavers. There's a spiny orb weaver. There is a orchid orb weaver, which is the green one. Green legs, green body. It's almost like see-through when you get the sunlight behind it. And then it's got orange spots on the abdomen. I think it's got some black on it too. There's a variety of orchid orb weaver spiders too. So that's all the bugs. As for spiders, spiders are good for the garden. They eat pests. I heard this quote somewhere. I said the best fertilizer for the garden is the gardener's shadow. And if my shadow is not in the garden because there's spiders everywhere, then spiders aren't good for the garden. So yes, they're good for pest control. They eat the bad bugs, but they gotta stay out of the walkways. I actually have to go spaghetti all of the spider webs out of the walkways because they're inhibiting where I can, where I can walk in the garden and I don't like that. Hey guys, this is Editing Leanne. I am realizing as I'm editing this video that I left out a couple of bugs that I got clips of. So I have this orange, lady beetle that's got black spots and I have heard some of my viewers called it a Japanese beetle but if you look up Mexican bean beetle it looks just like that. I've also found it's larvae which is like a yellow grub with black spikes. At least that is what I think that is so I could be wrong but that's the closest thing I could find online to what those things were and another one that I found that I forgot to mention is a two-stripe plant hopper and I learned that these are actually really destructive for farmers that have animals that they're raising on pastures and eat the grass up real bad. I hope you guys learned something from this video. I had fun doing the research. It was interesting that to learn if the good if the bugs are good or bad and what to do about them. So my advice take it or leave it. Worms. I use BT Bacillus thuringiensis. It's a bacteria comes in a concentrated form and you put it in a sprayer like a cup tablespoon or a couple tablespoons per gallon you want to look at the directions on the bottle I'm not off the top of my head I think it's like three or four I'll link an Emma Gardener video though that gives a good ratio and that's the one that I follow I'm just not remembering off the top of my head so BT for worms for hard exoskeleton bugs I'll use diatomaceous earth and then neem oil neem oil is a good multi-purpose pesticide in my opinion it is good for leaf miners, aphids, flea beetles, squash, um, the moths, though you want to be careful with um, certain pesticides. You don't want them to hurt bees too. So I don't think neem oil will hurt the bees. 
what will hurt the bees is diatomaceous earth. So you want to make sure you're either not spreading the diatomaceous earth on the flowers or you spread it when the bees are not out and about, which is hard because this time of year I feel like they're out and about all day. Well, that is it for the bug video. I hope you guys learned something along with me. If you want to be kept in the loop with all my garden adventures, then hit the subscribe button and the notification bell, and you'll be notified whenever I upload something new. Also, if you need a friend to learn how to garden with, I'm your girl. Happy gardening.